हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस वीडियो इज अ क्विक वॉक थ्रू ऑफ द नेक्स्ट स्पेशल पब्लिकेशन एट हंड्रेड डैश सिक्सटी वन रिविजन टू दिस नेक्स्ट पब्लिकेशन इज अ गाइड ऑफ कंप्यूटर सिक्योरिटी इंसिडेंट हैंडलिंग इट इज फ्रीली अवेलेबल ऑन द नेक्स्ट पोर्टल एंड यू कैन डाउनलोड अ कॉपी ऑफ दिस फ्रॉम द लिंक शोन इन द स्क्रीन एंड ऑल्सो गिवन इन द वीडियो डिस्क्रिप्शन सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो अबाउट इंसिडेंट रेस्पॉन्स और यू वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट अ प्लान पॉलिसी प्रोसीजर document for incident response then this is the best document i am telling you list special publication 800-61 is divided into total four sections the first section is just an introduction the second section is about organizing a computer security incident response capability in any organization the third section discuss about how to handle a incident the fourth section discuss about the coordination and the information sharing activities in case of an incident let's have a quick walk through of the whole document this publication helps in creating an understanding in mitigating the risk from computer security incidents by providing practical guidance on responding to incidents effectively and efficiently it includes guidelines on establishing an effective incident response program but the primary focus of the document is detecting analyzing prioritizing and handling incident so you can also tailor the recommended guidelines and solution given in this document to meet your specific security and mission requirement in this cyber age every company is dealing with information system and data and information security is very important in safeguarding the data and the information systems having those data but even having the best plan policies and controls in place do not provide us 100% assurance that the data is secure so it means still there are some chances of having security incidents so every organization should also be ready to handle those security incident and the first step of doing this is to create an effective computer security incident response capability within the organization so when we are talking about incident then we need to understand some more terms like events adverse event and incident so event we can say is any observable occurrence in a system or network like we can say a login activity in a system copying file activity from one system to the other system okay and the adverse event means events with a negative consequences like a server crash or a portal application not responding all these are adverse event now let's understand the meaning of the word incident as per the nist incident is a violation or imminent threat of violation of computer security policies acceptable use policies or standard security practices of that particular organization so we can say if anyone is using a file transfer service in any network and the same file transfer service or any kind of file transfer service is not allowed in that particular network means it is blocked in that particular network then we can say the event of file transfer is an incident here in this document we can see some more examples of incident right but we also need to understand the benefit of having an effective incident response in any environment let's check one by one what are the benefit of having incident response first benefit is responding to incidents become systematically so that appropriate actions are taken it means we will follow a consistent incident handling methodology if we have a well defined in incident response plan second benefit is it will help to minimize loss or theft of information and disruption of services by incident and the third benefit is the ability to use information gained during incident handling to better prepare for future incident handling and also we can use the knowledge gained in incidents to make stronger protection for system and the data and finally it will help us to comply with the law and regulations also it will help us in dealing with the legal issues that may arise during or after the incidents so to have an incident response methodology in place we need to have inc incident response policy incident response plan and procedure document and this nist guideline document provide you all the necessary information to create these documents via this document you can understand what should be there in the incident response policy what should be there in the incident response plan and what should be there in the incident response procedure as policy is a document with a top level statement and incident response plan provide the road map for implementing the incident response capability in the organization also plan 
should lay out the necessary resources and management support. Procedure document is based on the policy and the plan and covers the standard operating procedure that is SOPs covering spe uh, specific technical processes, techniques, checklist and forms. Also this document guide you how to share the incident information with outside parties and to whom like any third party with whom you are dealing with any law en enforcement agency, media etc. Then this document discuss about incident response team structure which covers three different team models. One is centralized incident response team, distributed incident response team or the coordinating team and the types of the employees in these teams like it says the employees can be permanent, they can be partially outsourced or they can be full, fully temporary employees. So this document also discuss about the other services which the incident response team can provide or help in. The services can be like intrusion detection, advisory, distribution, education and awareness, information sharing and the most important part of this section is the summary of the recommendations for organizing a computer security incident handling capability in any organization. These recommendations are to have a formal incident response capability, create an incident response policy, develop an incident response plan based on the incident response policy, develop incident response procedure and finally establish policy and procedure regarding incident related information sharing within the organization. Also provide pertinent information on incident to the appropriate organization that is information sharing. Consider the relevant factors when selecting an incident response team model. Select people with appropriate skill for the incident response team and finally identify other groups within the organization that may need to participate in incident handling. So these are the nine recommendations given in this particular document for incident handling. In the third section of this document is very important as it covers how to handle an incident. Means in this section they are discussing about the phases of incident response process. The major phases of incident response process are preparation, detection and analysis, containment, eradication and recovery and the fourth phase post incident activity. So let's take all these four phases one by one. The first phase is preparation which focuses on establishing an incident response capability so that the organization is ready to respond to incident and also helps in preventing incident by ensuring that system, network and application are sufficiently secure. So this phase provides information on the incident handler communication and facilities, incident analysis hardware and software, incident analysis resources, incident mitigation software. Right friends? So the second step of preparation phase is preventing incident which covers main recommendation pra practices for securing network, system and application like risk assessment, host security, network security, malware prevention, user awareness and training. So these are the recommended practices given in this particular phase. Then comes the second phase that is detection and analysis. Here we need to understand the concept of attack vectors. An attack vector is a path or means by which an attacker can gain access to a network or network server in order to deliver a payload or malicious outcome. So we can say the attack vector uh, enables attacker to exploit the system vulnerability including the human element. Some of the attack vectors are removable media, web, email, impersonation, improper uses, loss or theft of equipment. So all these are the different different attack vectors. The next important thing which we should know is the sign of an incident. Sign of an incident fall into two categories, precursors and indicators. Precursor is a sign that an incident may occur in the future and indicator is a sign that an incident may have occurred or may be occurring now. This document provides the list of common sources of these precursors and indicators. And when we have a sign or precursor in notice then we need to do, do analysis. And analysis is the most difficult part of the overall incident response. This document provides some recommendation for making incident analysis easier and more effective. These recommendations are to do profile networks and systems, understand normal behavior of the overall environment, create a log retention policy, perform event correlation, keep all host clocks synchronized, maintain and use a knowledge base of information use internet searches for research, run packet sniffer to collect additional data and filter the data, seek assistance from others. So that, these are the recommendations given in this document. 
After analysis, we need to document the incident and this needs to document provide details on how to document the incident. But we also need to understand how to do incident prioritization. So this document also provides this information. So as per this document, prioritization can be done depending on the functional impact of the incident, informational impact of the incident, recoverability from the incident. And finally, we need to notify relevant parties for the incident using some channel. And same is also discussed in this particular document. Then comes the containment and eradication phase. And the first step of this phase is choosing a containment strategy. We can say this is a decision making step and containment can have different strategies. The second step of this phase is evidence gathering and handling. And the third step is identifying the attacking host. And the fourth step is eradication and recovery. And the last phase of overall incident response life cycle is post-incident activity which covers lesson learned using collected incident data and evidence retention. So this lesson learned is a step for learning and improving. Each incident response team should evolve to reflect new threats, improve technology and lesson learned. Using collected incident data means this particular phase is about the number of incident handled, time per incident taken, objective and subjective assessment of each incident. All these data will help in creating a metric of incident handling and incident response. So finally, we have evidence retention. This may be because of the uh, prosecution purpose or because of the data retention policy of the organization. But while we are doing any evidence retention, we also need to keep the cost factor in our mind. So in this document, this is the last section which I liked most as it provides the checklist of the activities related to incident handling. So this is kind of a summary of the whole document. And here we have 20 well-defined recommendations for incident handling. And the last section of the document, that is section 4, covers the topic of coordination and information sharing with outside parties or shareholders. So this is all about the NIST 800-61 document, which is one of the documents from the list of 30 most important NIST documents which I have listed in my last video. So keep on watching for more such videos on NIST document for better understanding of information security domain. Thank you friends.